If I had to rank people most likely to make a global impact, I would put Tim at the bottom of the list. From the outside, Tim Dugan lived a simple life, but he found a way to thrive where it mattered. Tim had a modest career as a lawyer, arguing two cases in front of the Ohio Supreme Court. He learned to manage his mental illness and found a way to help others through their own mental health struggles. He created community wherever he went, online and in person. Tim found his purpose and was living it out. But God wasn't done working in Tim's life. So Tim called me and uh, said that he was having some problems. There were some symptoms that he was a little bit worried about. I was going to go check that out at the doctor. Wanted prayer. Uh, I felt like, Tim, this is no big deal. Sometimes he'd be prone to worst case scenarios, but just kind of played it off like routine stuff. This is what happens when you get close to getting 40. On March 15th, 2021, Tim was diagnosed with colon cancer. Within two weeks of his diagnosis, Tim had surgery to remove part of his colon and assess the extent of the cancer. So Tim's father called me after the surgery and I could tell from the quiver in his voice that it was serious. And I said, Tom, what's the good news? And he said, there is no good news. Uh, it, it is cancer and it looks like it very well may have spread. Uh, Tom was scared, which is not something I was used to hearing. And I knew at that point that Tim was up for the fight of his life. When Tim was um, diagnosed, there's a point where you eat up your paid sick time. And um, there's a memo that goes out and employees can donate one week, I believe that's how it works. That's the normal policy. I think when I talked with personnel, because you're not allowed to ask people for it, um, they said that they had never seen anything like it. Like the, the email went out and the flood of hours that came in was, I'm gonna cry, um, like instantaneous. That was Tim though. I mean, there wasn't a single person that didn't like him. So one thing Tim kept saying is that I don't think it's my time to die. I think that God has a plan for me and that he's not done for me. I think he thought back to his birth mom giving him up and wanted to step into God's divine purpose for his life. He wanted to make a real difference for people. The same way that he wanted to give inspiration to people struggling with mental illness, he wanted to be an advocate for people that were struggling with really severe health problems and issues. Tim threw himself completely into uh, fighting cancer, whatever that would be, whatever it would look like. I will be in hospice and I will still be pumping chemotherapy into my veins to kill this thing before I, I go. And okay, I, I will take it with me if I have to. Um, it's going to die before I do, period. I expected Tim to be a puddle. I expected him to give up, to wallow in self-pity. Uh, I, I thought maybe once things got hard, the fight would leave Tim. Wasn't what happened at all. I saw mental resilience and toughness like I've never experienced before. If I hadn't been able to be stable, mentally speaking, for like the last almost year now with the drugs I'm on, um, I, I would not be in a good place right now. I would be in a very bad place right now, actually. But I'm not, because I've managed to, we've managed to find something that has made me emotionally and mentally stable. It, he was empowered. There was a part of him that I think was stronger than he had ever been in his whole life. Facing his worst diagnosis, facing his worst outcome, he used everything he had for others and um, was stable. So, and that doesn't mean there's not moments of tears, and that doesn't mean there's not a moment when you're with your, you know, your best friend or your dad and you can have a breakdown because that's okay. And he knew that was okay. And the fact that he knew it was okay also meant he had embraced the mental health of, um, it's okay to let somebody know when it's bad, when you're falling apart, when you can't do it. As he had done through his mental health journey, Tim started a vlog to share his cancer updates and encourage others. He was open about his pain and his fears, but also his strength. As the cancer progressed and his physical health deteriorated, Tim continued to fight. 
trying to help Tim uh, mentally get through what he needed to go through in his cancer treatment, we set up some milestones, some things for him to look forward to. I threw a reunion poker game for him with all of our poker friends, uh, where 50 people from all over the United States flew in for one night to celebrate Tim. We also had our 20-year high school reunion that Tim was able to attend for about an hour. And then the last milestone that Tim was looking forward to was his 40th birthday party, which sadly he did not reach. In October, Tim entered the hospital for the last time. So I had the honor of spending the last few weeks of Tim's life by his side in his hospital room, and we talked about heaven. We talked about what might be on the other side. Uh, Tim did not want to die, but he was ready to die if that was what would happen. And uh, Tim's last days were surrounded by people that he loved, and we would read scripture together, and he was expectant and ready for what lied ahead. Like, whenever I think about communities and making a difference in the world, I think of, like, doing something huge. And it became very clear to me as Tim was going through this diagnosis and as everybody was interacting with him uh, that he had changed the lives of everybody that he had interacted with. He had changed my life entirely. And I didn't realize how big of a change it had been until I started thinking back on, like, our life together and started thinking about back on, like, how much this all meant. Um, but then it started, I started seeing ripple effects in everybody else that we were interacting with. Like all these people who had like, it's like, oh, I would have gotten divorced if it wasn't for you. Or, oh, I would have like given up on trying to find a job if it wasn't for you. Or I wouldn't have like followed my passion if you hadn't pushed me. It has really impressed upon me how important those interpersonal relationships are. And how like, even if we're not doing anything huge, how, like if we're not making the biggest difference in the world, like we're still making a difference to somebody and that matters. So I saw community be so powerful to Tim, especially at the very end where uh, Tim could no longer speak in complete sentences, uh, but he could listen. I had posted on social media and asked people to just share a word of encouragement or a story with Tim. And I was blown away to receive hundreds and thousands of comments. So we sat in his hospital room for hours as I read the stories and the comments, uh, and I watched the strength that he gleaned from the communities that he had built. He was going through so much pain and on the verge of so much loss. And even though he was like on the cusp of what he had to do near, had to be near the end, all I could think about with others was others. That is something that I strive to be now. Like after seeing him do that, having that kind of strength. It's just so inspiring to me. And like when I think about being like Christ-centered and like yeah, and trying to kind of live the faith, like seeing that is I think exactly what that means. Like thinking of others, always caring about others, even at the end. So the last time I saw Tim alive, I visited him in the hospital room uh, with one of our friends and prayed with him. I told him I loved him and that I would see him the next day. Uh, Tim took his last breath that night, and even though he was in hospice and we knew it was the end, uh, it, still, it still hurt. It still was uh, tough to receive the phone call the next day from his father that Tim had passed. So there was a moment at the funeral where I took a look around and saw hundreds of people that my friend Tim Dugan had impacted and it was just surreal. Uh, we had some very important lawyers, uh, cases literally were halted in their tracks for Tim's funeral and then we had people that had flown in from all over the country who were part of Tim's online community that wanted to be there present with him. There was Tim's childhood friends, there was his family, there was his church family. So many people that loved Tim and I saw this tapestry of all these people coming together who were mourning but also celebrating this man that had so impacted them. Being at the funeral was really when I realized he had really touched a lot of lives. And that really touched my heart knowing that the love that he had for everybody. We had a guy that flew in from Virginia that presented a book of cards and sentiments from all around the world, and it was presented to Tim's father 
um, on behalf of all the people that were mourning for Tim. There were multiple tribute videos that were done. Young people, like people in their 20s that are like, OPT, you were so funny, we miss you so much. Like women from Japan, women from Iceland, um, all different races, all different walks of life, all different demographics, they all loved him. I'm like, Tim Dugan, my friend, are you sure you're talking about the right person? He's still doing God's work, I believe that. I believe God had a plan for him, and this is what it is. You know, even if he's not here, he's still doing it. Tim Dugan may have seemed like just an ordinary guy, but he left a legacy by living out his unique purpose for God and making an extraordinary impact. Tim's life encourages us to overcome our fears, to love others, share our real struggles, and bring people together. What's so remarkable is that God isn't limited to what he could do through just one person. While our life ends and our part of the story comes to a close, God's story continues. When we give our lives away, when we take every circumstance as an opportunity to make an eternal difference, that becomes our real lasting legacy. It's the invitation to be you as a part of his story, and he's inviting each of us into it every day.